Hey, what's going on guys? How you doing? Welcome to Millionaire Mafia. Just closed out on our uh, RV park yesterday and I am on my way today to another property that uh, my partner Tyler and I are looking at in Pensacola. It's a very small multifamily, two unit, uh, pretty rough shape. So I'm going to take a, take a look at it and I figured I'd do a quick video on all the things that you need when you go look at a, a new, hopefully vacant property to try and uh, acquire it, check it out. All right guys, when you're pulling up into a neighborhood like this one, kind of looking around, mobile homes, kind of junky homes, got bars on the windows, right? Got, you know, this actually doesn't look bad, but kind of a junkyard type thing. There's a couple of them I already passed. Old houses. People parked in random places on the sidewalks. Sorry to say it, but anytime there's a church in the middle of a neighborhood, it's usually kind of a rough neighborhood. Um, I've definitely seen worse. Uh, but a lot of kind of run down properties. There you go. There's a smashed up garage or old, might have been a house. Right? Uh, just it's, it's not terrible, but when you see something like this, you really got to be concerned for your safety. All right. When you go into a property, you got to take that stuff into consideration, especially if you're going in there by yourself. Okay, so kind of funny, um, but you know that property I said that had the the knocked down house and looked probably like one of the crappier ones. Well, that's the property I was I'm going to. So uh, I'm going to show you guys some things in just a second that I always make sure I have with me when I go to view a property. Um, the tools that I use, uh, and then obviously I have a couple extra ones that I might bring along if I'm by myself. And you'll see what I mean in a second. All right. Uh, so we are actually inside of that house that I told you about. Um, if only smell vision was a thing, so you guys could smell smell what I'm not only smelling, but like can taste in this house, it'd be, it'd be glorious. So um, that right there, yeah, that's, that's dog crap. That's not the only pile. Uh, also almost got smoked uh, by a pretty good sized hornet nest that was right above where I was looking at the electrical panel to see what kind of wiring it had. But anyway, that's not the point of this video here. I'll probably show that, you know, some, some overlay of the walkthrough just so you can not look at my ugly face here. But I wanted to talk to you a couple things, uh, about a couple things that I do uh, when I go into a uh, property, as well as the things that I carry with me um, to make sure that I am effective and efficient and safe. Most importantly, safe, right? Okay, so the first thing I do, let's just kind of assume that this door right here, well, all this isn't the front door, but I come in, close the door. All right, the first thing I do is I look down and I just stand here for a minute, try to get in the light as if, if possible. And hopefully you can see as far as equipment, I wear boots, I wear pants. It is October, late October in Pensacola, but I am still wearing pants. The reason I'm wearing pants and the reason I'm standing still and standing here is because I'm looking for what? We already know there's dog crap. What also likes to hang out on pets? Right, fleas, right? So if you stand here and you just kind of watch your feet for a minute, watch your boots. I know my, my pants are a little bit darker, have my lighter ones. I typically like to wear in the in the laundry, but I got light enough boots. You can see little buddies starting to hop on you after a while. At that point, you know to get out of dodge and reattack a different way, or at least do a bug bomb. So that's that's the first thing I do, right after I get in. Back up a minute. The first thing I do before I even go into the property is make sure that I do a walk around, right? I want to walk around and see what windows were broken. I want to see the structural integrity of the house to make sure it's not going to fall down on me when I go in. And I also want to make sure that there's nobody else that wasn't supposed to be there that's there um, because that's going to bring out one of the most important safety tools that I'll show you in a minute before I would go into it. Okay, so anyway, I wanna make sure that it's safe and in fact vacant, or if it is occupied with a tenant or the, the owner or the seller, that I introduce myself and make sure that they know I'm, I'm coming in, right? So uh, we always make sure we call to let the uh, people know that we're coming or at least 
via email or text, but some people don't communicate, go figure. So anyway. real quick, I'll do a quick scan of what I got. So that's just my tool bag. There's plenty of other tools that you can use out of there that you might need, but the ones I use most frequently um, are gonna be very important. Gloves, whatever suits your fancy, in case you gotta grab something sharp, pointy, hot, you know, something that'll bite you, stab you, poke you, whatever. It's Florida, everything does that here, and in the house it can be just as bad. Um, I like this light. Uh, I actually got this as a Christmas present from Katie, and the reason I like it is a couple reasons. One, it's uh, it's cheap. Two, it's rechargeable. Three, it is like God's laser beam bright. I mean, like it'll it'll turn your hair white, and you can see everything in a house, right? Um, also, it's pretty pretty hefty, so if I need to use it as a weapon. It works, right? So it's got multiple purposes. And you can also kind of set it up like that to illuminate a space. So if you're in there working, you can turn it on and uh, let it go to town, okay? So that's why I like that one. And it's also got a couple different intensities. So, but I can see all the way back into uh, underneath of the house. I'm crawling into something that's off grade. I can see way, way back in there. All right, um, other thing I like to bring along is a hammer. Again, it can also be used as a defensive weapon other than just a, uh, an actual tool. You're going to catch a theme as I go along here, right? I'm uh, from the Chicago area, so I grew up in that kind of area, in that kind of environment, and uh, that kind of mindset. So uh, definitely not nearly as bad down here in Pensacola, but uh, it only takes one, right? So hammer can be uh, multi-use. Uh, you can use it for opening up. I've used it to pry open doors. Um, you know, you get to a house and they'll literally have the front door, you know, uh, have a piece of plywood there and it'll be screwed in or nailed in or a board over a window that you need to get access to. So it's just nice to have a hammer. Crowbar would be another additional thing that you might be bringing. Um, next thing is going to be to go along with the hammer, a drill. It's a lot easier to unscrew with a drill uh, if it's got those, you know, three, four inch screws that people like to put in on, on some of these doors, right? Uh, okay, you could also swing this pretty heftily, so uh, back to the original theme. Uh, always bring my phone, not just for uh, safety. I always make sure that I let my wife or my partner know where I'm at and what I'm doing, so that way I give them a, hey, if I don't call you back in about 30 minutes, call the cops, right? Uh, if you call me and I don't answer, call the cops. Um, but also take pretty good pictures with this thing. I don't take pictures or video with the, the GoPro for uh, our online stuff. It just takes too high resolution. It's not what we need. So this is what I use to take pictures and the walkthrough videos to then upload into our drive to then send out to our investors or be used internally for ourselves. Um, why do I have a credit card? Okay, uh, this is an old one. Haven't used it in years, um, but this thing, that's metal, all right? That's a metal one, it doesn't have to be. Get a thick piece of, uh, a thick credit card or credit card that you don't need or don't want. I don't know if you can see this, but this thing has got some battle wounds. It's pretty worn up, worn down. It's got some scars, got some bends, nicks. And the reason is anybody who has had to get into a house that is locked, um, unfortunately not the deadbolt, it doesn't work there, but if it's just locked on the handle, you can use this, and I'll do a quick video on that before I leave here, but slide down to push the catch back, and then it opens up real easy. Again, you got a deadbolt, you gotta go a different way, but this is pretty effective. I've used it many, many times, or I've heard of guys using this many, many times to get into a house that's locked. All right, um, another useful thing, if you got a house that's really bad, I mentioned the smell in here, it's really not noxious, it's just not great, but if you go into a house, you're worried about something, uh, that's got a you know really low micron size uh, and you need to put that bad boy on. I think this is a uh, three micron filter, it might be even less. So it does, does a pretty good job against, against most um, uh, particulates that are gonna be up in the air. Uh, so it's good to have. Uh, you gotta make sure you change the cartridge. All right, so also, I don't always bring this one because I usually forget it, I keep it on my belt, but I keep Mr. K-Bar, so this is a good multi-tool, right? You can use it for actually doing things in the house, cutting something, super sharp. Uh, you can also use it as a uh, as a, a weapon, right? As a quick, uh, I keep it right on my belt, keep it unlatched when I'm walking around the house, and it's pretty effective. 
It's also a deterrent. I don't pull out my last tool unless I absolutely need it, and neither should you. If you pull it out, you better be ready to use it. This one hanging on the outside of my belt lets people know that I'm not screwing around, right? And I never have an issue. However, if it ever comes to that point and I have an issue, you've got the last thing, and this is a pistol that I keep in condition one. This thing's ready to go. Uh, and this is something that I do not play around with. If it comes out, it's getting used, okay? Thankfully, I've never had to use it up to this point, but again, this is a last ditch effort. Um, so that's gonna go away, not to be used today. Um, I would probably actually recommend, I'm gonna be looking at a revolver. Um, there's a couple books that I read uh, from some guys that did a lot of section eight stuff. And he had several instances where he had his revolver and it was recommended to him by another, by one of his mentors that if you got a revolver and you ever think that you're going to get into some situation, he's basically neutralized the situation by just racking that thing back as loudly as possible. You get that and people know that you got something right. And they just walk away. There's a difference between doing that and actually pulling something out and acting like a tough guy. All right. If you're going to take it out, you're going to use it. All right. So don't screw around with that. Don't take it lightly. Treat never keep keep four weapon safety rules. Always know what uh, is also behind your target, but uh, that's for a different video, okay? Uh, that's what I bring along with me when I go to a, uh, a property, especially one that I'm going to on my own and one that is vacant because I don't have help getting open doors or getting you know access to certain things. And then I also wanna make sure that I, I keep myself safe. I'm gonna go home to my family every night. I wanna make sure you guys do as well. Uh, comment below. I'd like to know what your guys' tools of the trade are and what you guys have seen that have worked really well for you and anything that maybe I should add it to my tool belt when I bring along with me to my houses uh, that I go look at. All right. I'm going to go check this one out. I'll drop a quick video so you guys can uh, see it. Uh, but uh, wish me luck. Till next time, guys. Here's to your wealth.